Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the glorious King of Life Ministries. Online service. You are God all by yourself. Yeah, we have no copyright to this song. From beginning to the end, there's no place for you. You are God all by yourself. right to this song. somebody to this live service. Yeah, you don't need a man to be the God you are. Oh, yes, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. You are God from beginning to end. There's no place for argument. God all by yourself. Oh, yes. You are God. Please for argument. Oh, yes, Lord. You are God all by yourself. Our God is God all by himself. He's unique. There is no place for argument. Nobody can argue it. He's God all by himself. Brother Samson, welcome. Brother Romeo Cooper. Brother Morris Cooper, welcome. We want to bless God for you. Welcome. You're going to have a phenomenal time in the presence of God today. Welcome. Invite your friends. Share the video. You could just hit on the left side, share button, and share this video. You are God from beginning to end. There's no place for argument. Oh, yes, Lord. Please for argument, you are God. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. You are God all by yourself. We bless you, mighty God. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for another opportunity that we can come together to share your word, to listen to your undiluted Dabar. Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands. As your word comes forth, let your word breath in us. Father, purpose and destiny. In the name of Jesus, we break every power of the enemy, every impediment. Whatever wants to serve as an obstacle to the word settling down in us and the word 
forming and shaping us and bringing us to size. We step against it in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you be glorified and exalted. Father, as we go through this time of your word, that your word will be implanted in our hearts, your indelible word, that it will bring about a transformation, a change that will never be the same again. We'll never see ourselves, Lord, the way we've been seeing ourselves. But we'll rather see ourselves from the perspective of your word, from the perspective of who you are and what you want to accomplish in us in the name of Jesus. Father, we just honor you. We thank you. Take all the glory. You are God all by yourself. There is no argument about it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Today, I just want to briefly talk to us on what I've titled, God has need of you. God has need of you. We should know that God is a spirit and spirits don't come on the earth to do anything. Spirits are not allowed to come on the earth. So for God to function in the earth, for God to do anything in the earth, God needs a body. God needs a man. God needs a man to use. And you and I can be that man that God can use. Many times we look at ourselves and we think we cannot do anything. But you see, I want you to understand today that anything that God wants to do in this earth, God needs a man to do it. Not that God is not able to do it, not that he cannot do it, but God cannot break his internal principle. The principles of not allowing, I mean, spirits to function in the earth. The earth realm is for men, it was given to us so that we can function in the earth realm as men. And there is nothing that God is going to do that God will do without you and without me. He needs us to do what he wants to do. Not that he's not able, he can do without us, but he will not do without us because it is his principle that is laid down, that is settled down. And I want us to read Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 3. The Bible said, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a cut with her. Lose them and bring them to me. And if any man says anything to you, and if any man says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send you. The Bible talks about this time. Jesus was about to go into Jerusalem to celebrate his triumphant victory. You know, in the kingdom, we celebrate our victory even before we get in the competition. We celebrate our victory even before we, we face the, 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 the march. So Jesus, just before he could die, Jesus Christ was about going into Jerusalem to go and celebrate. But then, Jesus needed this donkey to take him into, this, into Jerusalem to celebrate. So he sent his disciples to go and untie the donkey. And he said something in verse 3. He said, if any man asks you, why are you loosening this donkey? Tell him that the master has need of it. That the Lord has need of it. The word Lord, Adonai, it means owner. The owner has need of it. He wants it. He wants to use it. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus could go to Jerusalem. Jesus could just appear in Jerusalem. But Jesus did not do it because he wanted to go there. So he wanted to go the normal way. So Jesus took this donkey and rode on this donkey. The women spread their lapper. The women took touches and they begin to heal Jesus. Now, I want you to understand the donkey is like you and myself. Jesus needed a donkey to ride into Jerusalem. And God also needs you and I to do what he wants to do in the earth. You are the only legal beings. You are the only legal entities that can operate and function in this earth realm. And there are so many things God wants to do in this earth realm that God is not doing because many of us are not availing ourselves to be used by God. Now, let me use an example. Some people will easily understand this example. None of us on this, um, 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 I mean, in this podcast have ever seen 
um, witchcraft spirit. But witchcraft spirit do exist. Now, they do not operate and function without a body. They need somebody to enter and function. So, when you see somebody is being wicked, somebody is killing, eating human beings, and doing other things, that person is possessed by witchcraft spirit. So, when the devil possesses that person, the devil, be, the spirit of the devil, begins to to use that person to do evil, begin to use that person to do bad things, begin to use that person to carry out evil. Now, so it is. The devil can, you have never seen the devil. The devil will never come down and say, I'm Satan, I'm Lucifer, I'm the devil, I'm functioning. No, his spirit goes into people to accomplish his will and his purpose through those people and in those people. Now, I want you to understand the same is with you and I. Every good thing that God wants to do in the earth God wants to use people. God wants to use people. And you and I are the people that God is looking up to, to use him. So you are not just saved. You are not just born again to settle down, to sit down. No. The reason God chose you, the reason God chose you out of that family, the reason God chose you and took you from where you were is because God wants to use you. He has a need for you. That's why he loose you from the, the, the alcohol, the promiscuous life, the, the life of evil. He loose you, he set you free so that he will use you. Now, many people get complacent and satisfied when they get saved and they sit down and they think that it's all just to get saved and be waiting to go to heaven and be waiting to, you know, uh, uh, for the rapture that one day the rapture will take place and they will go to heaven. No, God has a lot of projects in the earth that God wants to accomplish, that God wants to do. There are a lot of things, and I'm not restricting these things to the spiritual arena. Yeah, there are people who are being used by God in the spiritual arena, but God also has interest in other sectors of the society. God has interest in the medical field. God has interest in the engineering world. God has interest in the world of science and technology. God has interest in the world of arts and entertainment. God has interest in the business and the economic world. God is wanting to raise economic apostles, apostles in the business field. God wants to raise people. That is the reason why I'm one of those who do not accept and believe that a man of God is somebody or a woman of God is somebody who is restricted to the pulpit. No. A man of God is the man that God is using, whether in the business world, whether in the, 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 the political world, whether in the world of science and technology. Once God is using, you are a man of God. And then I look at the life of Daniel. How many messages Daniel preached? Where did Daniel preach? Was Daniel a pastor? Was Daniel a priest? Was Daniel maybe he could, a, a prophet that was going and foretelling and foretelling? No, Daniel was a politician working in the government of Babylon. But Daniel was a man of God, God's man to the government of Babylon. God's man in the city of ba in the in the nation of Babylon. Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were God's men in that sector of the society, and they were influencing the society and permeating the society with the will and the purpose of God in the times. Hallelujah. So God said, "I mean, lose him and let him go. If any man ask you." Tell them the master has need. That is the reason why I am loosening the donkey because the master wants to use it. Now, when Jesus got on the donkey in the cart, the Bible said when he was entering Jerusalem, the women spread the lapper. The amazing thing about it is that it was the donkey that was riding on the lapper, that was walking on the lapper. Why? Because the donkey was carrying Jesus. You see, God wants to be carried. God wants to, God wants to dwell in us. God wants to inhabit us if i will allow if i'm allowed to use the word god wants to possess us so that he just how people are possessed with evil spirit and permeating evil and wickedness god wants to possess us so that we can carry on good the bible said how jesus christ of nazareth was was 
anointed with the Holy Ghost and sanctified. I mean, was how Jesus of Nazareth, I mean, was anointed, was full of the Holy Ghost and anointed, anointed with the Holy Ghost and went about doing good. The Bible said, for God was with him. I want you to understand that he was so anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good. God wants to anoint us. God wants to release his spirit upon us. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth and everything, and God thought that there was a need for a man, that there was a need for a man to rule in the earth. There was a need for a man to be in charge of the earth. Why he, God, is in charge of the heavens. He become, the Bible says, the heaven is the law and the earth has he given to the sons of man. So God thought about it and God said, I cannot leave the earth like this. There must be a man who will come on the earth and rule and take authority and be in charge of the earth. So God thought and God made the first man, Adam, and his wife, Eve, and God gave them authority, dominion, power. In Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26, the Bible said, before God created man, God sat with himself, the trend God had, and God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that man will have dominion over the birds of the air, over the fish of the sea. And over everything that creeps upon the earth. What God was saying, God was saying that I need to make man. Man needs to come on the earth and take a place and become the ruler of the earth and have authority and have dominion and rule over the earth. When God created man, the Bible says in verse 27, and God created man, he made male and female, he created he them. Then verse 28, the Bible says, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. So God needed a man to rule the earth. But then unfortunately, the man God put in the earth, man disobeyed God. Man went astray from God. Now, this did not change the plan of God. This did not change the mindset of God. This did not change the intention of God. God still needed man because God had already made the earth for man. God has given it to man. So through the time, God found a man called Noah. And God used Noah to build an ark. And God, because God wanted to do something. At that time, God wanted to build an ark. So God found a man called Noah that God used to build the ark. And God used Noah in the days of Noah to preserve the generation of good people. Hallelujah. And after that, after that, God found a man called Abraham. Look at Abraham. Abraham came from an idolatrous background. Abraham came from a background where the people were worshiping idols. They were not holy. They were not righteous. They were not great. Now, God is not looking at your greatness. God is not looking at where you came from. Your future is too important to God for God to begin to hold you by your past. If we look at the past of Abraham, Abraham was not even qualified to be called by God according to man's definition of qualification. But God is not looking for how many qualified. God is looking for people who are ready and available, who wants to avail themselves, not the capable, not that your education does not matter in this. Your, I mean, everything you are claim and you have and you are relying and depending on they really do not matter when it comes to this because god does not want to share his glory with you hallelujah god does not want to share his glory with you so god chose a man abraham that came from an idolatrous background a background of of, of, of idol worship a background of people who worship idol who did not worship the lord but god yet chose abraham and god cleansed him and prepared him and god took abraham and god used abraham mightily to god could choose abraham and use a man like Abraham, God can use you. You are not insufficient. You are not a nothing. You are not a nobody. You are not a, no, a, a non-entity. You are somebody that God can use because God needs you. Let us look at another scripture in the Bible. Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 6. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 6. Can I find it quick, please? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, 
if you read from verse 1, I don't want to read, uh, go to verse 1 because of time, but you see where Isaiah has, has been serving as a prophet and God appeared to Isaiah and God showed Isaiah his true nature and God, God showed Isaiah who he really was. And then God said something, God said in verse 8 of Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible says, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Now listen to me. God cannot go. God cannot come and go by himself. God cannot. There are certain things in the earth God will not do. God is looking for people to use. God is looking for men. God is looking for women. God is looking for sons, daughters. God is looking for you. He wants to use you to do something in the earth. Stop being satisfied with sitting in church. Stop being satisfied with shouting hallelujah, praise the Lord, and waiting for the rapture, and waiting for the sweet by and by. No, that is not why Jesus saved you. Jesus saved you because he has need of you. We saw it when he said, lose the donkey. The fact that the donkey was tied is a sign. I mean, it's, it's, it's an indication that the donkey was, uh, was, 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 was under oppression, was under chain, needed deliverance, needed to be free, needed to be saved, needed to be delivered out of that place. So he sent the disciples, deliver the, the donkey, set it free. If any man asks you, why are you setting it free? Tell that man, the master has need. So it is not, when you get saved, it is not over. It is not over. It is not over. God has need of you. God wants to use you. Yes. He wants to use you. There are so many things God wants to do in the earth that God is looking for men, looking for women to use, to do these great things that he wants to do. So God said, who will go for us? Who shall we send? God is still asking the question today, who will go for us? Don't tell me about your family background. Don't tell me about where you came from. Your background is not as worse as Abraham was. Abraham was from an idolatrous background, a background where the people worship idol. They did not reverence God. Yet, God chose him. God can choose you too. Amen. Who will go for us? Then he said, then I said, yeah, am I, Lord, send me. Yeah, am I, Lord, send me. Yeah, am I, Lord, send me. That's enough. That's what God wants from you. Your availability. Yeah, am I, Lord, send me. That's what God wants from you. Send me to the medical world. Send me to the world of politics. Send me to the world of business. Send me to the world of science and technology. Send me to the world of arts and entertainment. Send me, Lord. Here am I. Send me to the world of writings that I will write books. Send me, Lord. God is just waiting to hear your say. Send me. And listen to me. Don't bother about all of what you need because when God is sending you, he will provide everything you need to accomplish the work and the purpose that he has. Hallelujah. Yem, yeah, our Lord, send me. He said, yem, yeah, our Lord, send me. God is saying, send me. Yem, yeah, I mean, as I say, yem, yeah, our Lord, send me. I am willing. I am available. What God needs from you is your willingness and your availability. Listen to me. You know, you don't have, I said something today, you don't have to be great to attempt great things. Your willingness, your availability. David was available. David was willing. So God used David to kill Goliath. Who is that Goliath in your family? Who is that Goliath in your generation? Who is that Goliath that is around? Who is that Goliath that says nobody from your family will ever raise their head? Who is that Goliath that is suppressing your family, suppressing you? Who is that Goliath? If you are willing and you are available, God can use you. David was not a trained soldier. David was not a, a trained soldier. But yet God used David to deliver Israel. Can I talk about uh, 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 Jeremiah? Let's turn our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's look at the man Jeremiah from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's look at the man Jeremiah. I told you God in all ages, time, and dispensation, God has always been looking for a man. When God found Jeremiah from verse 4, the Bible said, Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, the word of the Lord came to me saying, God calls a Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was uh, was not thinking sufficient in himself. Then before, God said in verse 5, Before I form you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. Before I form you to your mother, I knew you. Before your father could say, Hi lady, I knew you. 
I knew you. He said, before you were formed in the womb of your mother, I knew you. I knew you. God knew you before you were even formed in the womb of your mother. Before you became a clot of blood. He said, I knew you. I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctify you. And I set you apart. Oh my God. I sanctify you. Before you were born, I sanctify you. I set you apart. And I ordain you a prophet to the nations. Listen to what God is saying. God is saying that before you were born, before you were formed in the womb of your mother, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you aside. I sanctify you. I ordain you a prophet. Listen to me. Before you were born, your ordination was already carried out. Maybe before you were born, you were a medical doctor. You were a lawyer. You were a a businessman, a businesswoman. You were a great and mighty man or woman before you were formed in the womb, before your mother even knew you, before your mother even knew your dad, you were formed. Before you were formed, God said, I knew you. I knew you and I sanctify you. It means I set you apart. I said, this one is a medical doctor. This one is a lawyer. This one is going to be an engineer. This one is going to be something before. Then he said, I ordain you before you were born. I ordain you a prophet. He ordained Isaiah as a prophet. Then he said from verse 6, Then I said, Oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak. I am a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say you, I am a child. For you shall go to all to whom I will send you. And whatever I command you to speak, speak it. Now, as Jeremiah was looking at his limitation, he was looking at his nothingness. He was telling God, God, I cannot make it. I'm a child. I cannot speak. I'm a youth. I cannot make it. God said, Jeremiah, shut up. Before you were formed, I told you I knew you. I cannot ask you, demand from you something that you are not able to do. As I have told you, I will use you. I will, I will use you to do this thing. Now, I, Jeremiah thought he was he was nothing. He was nobody. But he did not understand that God is looking for nothing to make something out of. God is looking for, all God needs from us is our availability. Not our capability. He's looking for our availability. When we avail ourselves to God, God will mightily use us. God will use us in a miraculous way. God will use us in a mighty way. God will use us to carry out his great acts, his great deeds. Because there are a lot of things that God wants to do. That's why they call him omnipotent. The word potent, it means what you are able to do that you have not done yet. Your potential. Your potential are the things that you are able to do that you have not done yet. And God is omnipotent. That means God is all potent. All potent. God has so much potential. There are so many things God wants to do, but God is looking for somebody. That's why he said, he, God said, that, I look for a man and I fall not, and my hands stay back. Yes, God is looking for a man. God is looking for a woman, for you and I. He wants to use somebody. Look, at, I'm still reading from Jeremiah chapter 1. When you look at verse 10, God says, see this day. He says, see this day. First of all, from verse 9, you read from, uh, 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 from, from 5 to 10. I'm just reading verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Hallelujah. God is saying to Jeremiah, even though you think you are insufficient, even though you think you are a nobody, you are a non-entity, even though you think you are all, you know, you are nothing. But uh, uh, Jeremiah, I want you to understand that I'm placing my word in you. Every
All right, is that sign now? Hello, 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 hello. Am I having sign now? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so sorry. All right, so we have sign now, right? Do we have sign? We have sign. Please give me a thumbs up. Do we have sign? Please give me a thumbs up. I think the sound is on now. All right, so like I was saying, in Jeremiah chapter 51, and reading verse 21, 20, the Bible says, God said, you are my battle axe and my weapon of war. For with you, I will break the nations in pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break in pieces the horse and the rider. With you, I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. What God is saying, God is saying, look, you are my battle axe. You are my weapon of war. What God is telling us, God is simply telling us that he cannot fight battle without his battle axe. So that means God needs us to fight his battle. God needs us to break down the kingdoms of darkness, the powers and the rules of darkness. He needs us to do it. And we got to avail ourselves that God will use us to break down those wrong dimensions, those wrong things. So God is saying in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20, He says, you are my battle axe. You are my weapons of war with you. The key word that is with you. It's not you doing it, it's God using you to do it. So anything God wants to breath in the earth, God is going to breath it with you, with you. Somebody say, with me. With me, he's going to come out with inventions. With me, he's going to bring books that have not been read. With me, he's going to bring ideas that have not, you know, existed. With me. So you are not just, just another species. You are not just another person waiting. You are precious in the sight of God. You are so noble in the sight of God. And what God wants to do, he wants to use you. Now, I want us to go from experience with God. What are some things that how God operated? I mean, to make us to get convinced that God needed a man. Now, when men fell from grace, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they fell. And men became sinner, and men became an enemy of God. God needed to redeem mankind. God needed to set mankind free. God needed to bring liberation to mankind. So what happened is that God thought about redeeming men. God thought about setting men free. God thought about you know, restoring man back to the pit and the free in the, the eternal era. So what God did, no man was qualified to come in the earth. No man was qualified to uh, 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 come and set man free. So God understood that the only legitimate and legal way to come in the earth is, uh, is coming as a man and not as a spirit. So God chose a body. Firstly, God chose a virgin called Mary. And God used her to, and God chose a body called Jesus. And God came in the human form to liberate us, to, 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 to break the power, the chain over the life of mankind and set man free. So God came in the body and Jesus came. As, and God came as a man called Jesus and God gave his life. That's why in Christianity, we don't worship God. We worship one God. And that God we worship, he manifested himself in the flesh and became Jesus. Hallelujah. And he became Jesus. So God becoming Jesus, giving himself as a man in the earth, he died on the cross for us. And from the time Jesus left the earth, God has not ceased looking for a man. God still needs a man because the assignment is not over. Yes, the assignment to save us, the assignment to liberate us, the assignment to give us salvation, yes, that one is complete. But the assignment of God's creativity, the assignment of God's continuity of creation, the assignment of God doing exploits in the earth, that assignment has not ceased. So God still looks for a man. Do you wonder why they refer to the church as the body of Christ? 
Because the church is God's body. God needs us. He has need of us. He wants to use us. No matter who you are, where you are, what you've done before. When God is looking at you, God is not looking at your past. God is not looking at what you have done before. God is looking at your future because your future is too important to God for God to hold you by your past. God cannot hold you by your past. God is a futuristic God. Every time God sees you, God looks at you from the perspective of the future. God looks at you from the perspective of what you are able to do, what you are capable of doing, not what you have done before, not what you have not done before. So when God gives you a tax and assignment, God empowers you, God capacitates you, God strengthens you, God molds you, God makes you, and God gives you the enablement to carry out his assignment. The reason why you will not, coronavirus will not kill you is because God has a precious assignment for you to carry out. And God is not going to protect you because of you. God is going to protect you because of the preciousness of his assignment that you have on your life. That God wants you to accomplish. So when Jesus came in the earth and Jesus left the earth, God still needs a man. God still needs a body because God cannot come on the earth as a spirit and operate. God must possess a body. And you are the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. And God depends on, our, on us. God wants to use us to do whatever he will do. No matter where you are. Maybe today you might be a wretched sinner. Today you might be somebody who has uh, 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 committed 30, 40 abortions. Listen to me. It does not matter to God as long as you are ready to avail yourself. As long as you are ready to say, God, here am I. Send me. Whatever you want to do in the earth, I am a willing vessel. I surrender myself. Come and possess me. Come and put your spirit in me to make me and mold me so that I will do what you want me to do. So that I will do what you want to do in the earth. Father, if you're looking for any man to use, any woman to use, to carry out your mighty deeds, your mighty acts, I am available. I'm available. I'm available. I'm willing to be used by you. Friends, if we come to the place of availing ourselves, I told you, God is not looking for your righteousness, your holiness. Yes, God required that we live holy. Yes, I agree. But you don't have to come. God said, come as you are. And I will make you holy. You see, when God sets you apart, you become a holy vessel unto God. <laughs> yeah, you become a vessel, sanctified, meet for the master's use. Now, so God wants to use you. Just how, I mean, uh, 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 people have things, utensils they use. You are a vessel that God wants to use. So God needs you. That is the message for today. I want you to tell yourself that God needs me. Yes, he needs you. Just how you are. Look at the people that came to God. Look at Moses. Moses was a murderer, a fugitive running away from justice when he killed the, Ethiop the Egyptian. He ran into the bush of Ethiopia with, and he was with uh, a Jethro. He was there and God appeared to him in the burning bush. God said, it is you that I'm choosing. It's you. I need you. I need you. Look at Cain and Abel. Why is it that God did not protect uh, uh, Abel against Cain? Abel killed Cain. I mean, Cain killed Abel rather. When King killed Abel, then God came and started to protect Abel. You know, when you read Genesis there, you will find that in Abel, Abel was the original of music. In the descendant of Abel came people that, that built. So God was not just protecting the vessel, the personality of Abel. God was protecting what he had in Abel. There are things that God has placed in you. You are not an accident. You are not just born. You didn't, you listen to me. Your father, your mother, maybe they were playing, maybe they were joking, and mistakenly you got pregnant. But with God, you are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. God calculated, God planned, God intentionally, willfully, and deliberately release you into the realms of the earth so that you will come and have dominion and dominate and rule in a particular area. Not everybody will be men of God. Not everybody will be politicians. Not everybody will be engineers. Not everybody will be doctors and nurses. Not everybody will be lawyers. Not everybody will be builders. But God will 
use you in a particular area and make you to have dominion in that area. All you need to do is to avail yourself. And as you avail yourself, God will reveal to you the area he wants to place you in this earth and give you dominion and authority in that area. Listen to me. You are not supposed to be taking cover. You are supposed to be taking over. For too long, you have been taking cover, hiding from witches and wizards, hiding from demonic people, hiding from, you know, uh, 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 occultic people. You are not supposed to have from them. Listen to me. They are operating with the spirit of the devil in them. And you are operating with the spirit of God in you. And the spirit of God is greater, mightier, stronger than the spirit of the devil. The spirit that is in you is greater. And that is why I've come today to encourage you that God has need. You need to avail yourself. You need to avail yourself. God is only looking for your availability. That's all he wants from you. Some years ago, I surrendered myself to him. These few days, I've been praying, God, anything you want to do in this earth, I'm available. You can use me. I'm available. You know, it's like somebody tell you, say, my car is there. Anytime you want to use it, use it. Anywhere you want to go, use it. Yeah. And that person has access. I give God undeniable access to my life. God, use me. Do what you want to do in me. Whatever you want to accomplish in this earth, Lord, I'm available unto you. Breathe in me, O God, the creative ability. Breathe in me, O God, the ability to, to function, to, to become the man, the woman that you that you destine your people to be. Breathe in me, O God, your power. The same breath you put in Adam and he became a living soul. Breathe in your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless God for you. We thank God for you. All you need, like I said, make yourself available. Friends, you may not be strong at prayer, but you can start with 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Just purpose that every day I will pray for 15 minutes. Find a place in your room, in your house, and just pray for 15 minutes there. Talk to God. I'm not talking about the prayer where you can be telling God you're not wanted to stay in his presence. I'm not talking about the prayer where you'll be telling God you're not qualified. No, and not the prayer I'm talking about. I'm talking about the prayer of availing yourself. The prayer of consecrating yourself and say, God, I'm available to you. God, I'm available. I availed myself. You know the songwriter say, I gave myself away so you can use me. I gave myself away so you can use me. Yes, I availed myself. I gave myself. Give yourself away. Ask the Lord, Lord, use me. Use me. Use me. You know, when you avail yourself, and God sees that you are available. God is going to make you capable. And God is going to use you mightily. The people God uses, He's not using them because of their intelligence. He's not using them because of their beauty, their handsomeness. He's not using them because of their holiness or righteousness. God is using them because they are available. Let us avail ourselves. Friends, see the new dynamics that is taking place. Churches are closed. In our own age and time, I don't know what had happened before, where the whole world, churches are closed. Some places, churches are trying to open. Praise God for that. Now, how will you survive if churches are closed? If that's only your reliance to go to church with the corporate anointing, that is the same thing we do in church. You can do it in your home, in your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to use you. All God needs from you is your availability. He needs you. Look, there is divine human partnership. There is divine human partnership always in all dispensation and time. The Bible says in Amos chapter 4 verse 7, says, the Lord God will do nothing except he first reveal it to his servant, the prophet. What God cannot come on this earth, this earth is given to you. This is your domain. This is your terrain. You know, let me give you an example. It's just like a, a young man living with a father and he, he gets big and he gets married. And he, he and his family living somewhere else. A father does not just intrude in his home. No, he doesn't just intrude. So God has given the earth to us to rule over the earth and be in charge of the earth. That's what he's done. And God will not just intrude. He will have to use us to do what he wants to do. And there are so many things God wants to do in the earth. 
and as weak as you think you are. As impotent, incapacitated as you think you are, it is you that God is looking for. The Bible says God used the foolish things of this world to conform the wise. Look at David. <laughs> David was not a twin soldier. David only carried food to the battlefront. But David saw Goliath defying the armies of God. And David made himself available. He said, I will take the shame from Israel. I'm available to do it. Because David was available, God used David. God can also use you. Hallelujah. God can also use you. Mary was available as a virgin. God used her. Joseph availed himself in Egypt for God to use him. And God used him. Throughout the history of life, throughout life, everybody that God used were available. They were not first capable. They were first available. Then God made them capable. Look at Moses. Look at Abraham. Abraham that came from an idolatrous background. Look at Noah. Noah always the most ridiculous and funny one. Noah never heard about rain. Nobody heard about rain before. Nobody knew what is an ark. Noah is building an ark. Noah, why are you building ark? What is ark? Ark. Boat. Ship. What is ship? Nobody knew what Noah. Noah was looking so funny. But because Noah availed himself, God used him to save the dead world. If we avail ourselves to God, God will use us. And God will accomplish mighty things in and through us. And the will of God will be done in the earth. Friends, you are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are not in the church. Some people say they are flow member. You are not a flow member. <laughs> God, listen to me. You don't need position. You don't need type. We use you. You know, I was challenging some people. I was asking, what is Daniel? Daniel, was Daniel a pastor? Was Daniel a priest? Was Daniel a prophet? Yeah, the book of Daniel is a book, is a, is a prophetic book. But Daniel as an individual, let's tell it was Daniel as an individual. No, Daniel was a child of God. Daniel was, in fact, Daniel's office, Daniel was a politician working in the government of Babylon. But because Daniel was available, God used Daniel to do great and mighty things. God can use you. God can use you. God can use you. God is looking for you. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 46, verse 9, it says the eyes of God of God are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking for somebody whose heart is loyal to him, that he will show himself mighty through them. Look at Gideon. God appears to Gideon and says, Thou mighty man of valor. Gideon starts looking for the mighty man of valor around him. Then the angels, I'm talking to you, say, how can I be, how can you call me a mighty man of valor? See, I'm hiding from my enemies. Can a mighty man of valor hide from his enemies? And he start putting off fleas with God. When, if an angel from heaven appears now, you will call yourself weak, victim, nobody, nothing. He will call you another name. You are not a victim. You are not a nobody. You resemble your father. You resemble the one who created you. You carry his image. You carry his likeness. And you were made to rule this earth. Hallelujah. We can determine, decide what happens in this earth realm. By our connection with God. So I encourage you, find a time, not sorry for prayer. Find a time, consecrate yourself in prayer to God. And say, God, I'm available. Lord, I surrender my all to you. I gave everything I am and I have to you. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. God will choose where to use you. Some of us, God is using us as ministers of the gospel. Some of you, God, will, God can use you as doctors. Some of you, God can use you as a carpenter. Some of you, God can use you as a nurse that the whole world will hear about. Look at this little child, Jessam or uh, Samantha Diaz. This little girl, I mean, she, she loved God. And God has used her today. She, I mean, she went and, and, and lifted the name of Jesus in, in at American Idol. Lifted the name of Jesus. Today, God has changed her status, changed her position, changed her life. God can do the same for you if you avail yourself. God is looking. You see, God was looking for somebody to kill Goliath. All that thing Goliath was doing in Israel, God was looking for somebody available. Saul and his entire army, they were not willing to avail themselves. 
Fear took over them. Fear took over them. You can avail yourself. God can use you to break whatever limitation has been over your family. Whatever limitation has been over your life. God can use you to break it. And God can bring you to the place of honor. The place of exalting and lifting his name. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you because you are a good God. Thank you for your word today. Father, you say you need a man. You need a woman. You need us. You need us. You have need of us to do what you want to do in the earth realm. Father, therefore, we surrender to you. Use us. Glorify yourself. Exalt yourself through us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even as the donkey took Jesus to Jerusalem, Father, for Jesus to be glorified, we avail ourselves that, Lord, we will carry you everywhere we go. We open up our spirits unto you. Come and inhabit us. Come and live in us. Come and do your will through us that your name will be exalted. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who were online just now. Father, listening to this word. May this word resonate in our spirit. May it continue to echo in us, Lord. We open ourselves to you, Lord, as you breath into Adam, into the dirt. And Adam became a living soul with enormous creative power, with the ability, Lord, to name everything on the earth. And Adam became a foe, Father, with having dominion, authority, power, ruling in the earth. Lord, we open up ourselves. Breathe in us, Lord. Breathe in us. Holy Ghost, breathe in us. Because, Lord, you left the Holy Ghost here so that he will empower us, so that he will capacitate us, so that he will strengthen us to carry out your assignment. Father, we pray, Lord, you will reveal your purpose for our lives to us. And our Lord, we will discover it and we will walk in your purpose and our lives will never be the same again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To you be all the glory. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Shalom, peace. On Tuesday, I'll be here again. God bless you. Ciao. Thank you very much.